Hello, this is Dan Sigmund, and in this video, I'm going to give a report on what I saw in the Rubicon School Building. Scott was uh, very kind and walked me through the whole building. And when I came to the building, I said, Scott, show me the worst. I want to see what's going on in this building. Who is Scott? Scott is the building and ground supervisor of the Honor School District. So he did so. <clears throat> Again, this school is grandfathered and does not have to meet ADA guidelines or new building codes because of its age. That has been good to our advantage up to this point. It was built initially in 1958. There was an addition in the 70s. There was another addition 10 to 15 years later, and then the final addition was in the year 2000, where they added a gym and some classrooms. The building, I can say, is solid. All roofs show no signs of any leaks. The furnaces, and there's three furnaces that I was shown, they were all new in the year 2000 and they look just like new and these three furnaces don't all fire at once. First one fires when you need a little heat, then when it gets a little chillier and some more heat is called for, the second one will help it. And if it is blistery cold and windy, the third one will fire up, but I was told the third one rarely fires up. And the day I was there was a mild day, sort of like today in the 30s, the upper 30s, none of the furnaces were on at that point in time so the building does hold its heat and it does heat fairly well the uh, hvac units are on the roof and they are all in working condition one of the units is new the last few years purchased with covid money i was told uh, the old controls especially in the older part of the building those controls are outdated and um, they don't work right that is a problem there some louvers aren't automatically adjusted anymore because of that fact um, I was shown where they do go in and just manually adjust the louvers if they have to once in a while so it's not ideal but it's not impossible and I'm just looking to see use common sense here on cost versus practicality so that's the condition in a nutshell of the HVAC system the septic system ends up at a mound which was put in in the year 2000 the old uh, part of the septic system the tanks and the field they were they were all gone when they put the mound in the old lines under the older portions of the building, coming from the bathrooms in the back, that one line is a problem. He said, Scott said, it will plug up every year if you don't pay any attention to it. There must be a rough spot in it. They took a camera in it and they saw that rough spot. It's um, cast iron piping that's getting a little rusted, you know, and it kind of catches things once in a while. But he said if they run a charge of water down every couple months 10 15 gallons it usually pushes anything through that might be starting to uh, get caught up and then they don't have a problem so it's it's not impossible to maintain it just takes a little water from the clean out in one of the in one of the classrooms and uh, what else did i find the electrical system the breaker boxes and the sub panels are at different places in the building because when you make an addition to a building you usually add a sub panel for that addition so nothing is centrally located that way but the administrator said it is all safe and secure there is no danger to any of the students um, even though it's not in one room plumbing for the sinks in the old classrooms was disconnected because they just started leaking too often the kitchen was expanded into the old lunch room where I used to sit and eat my lunch. And the old gym is now the new cafeteria. All the floors look, I thought, very good. Some have been, of course, new in the year 2000 already, but some are older, but there's no problems with them that I saw. Nothing in the electrical, the plumbing, the septic, the HVAC, or the building integrity of itself. It's not falling over. 
nothing is unsafe for the students, and it really is fit to use, but it's old in some places. It's not convenient in some places, it, but it is grandfathered, and it still can be used, and just given a little facelift here and there inside without running into trouble. So we have to decide if it's worth sticking $23 million into it or if there should be some more options as to something else we can do to make this all work. Whether this is going too fast and we need more time to think about it, I personally think that before we um, say we are going to spend $38 million the next 22 years to do this for our siblings, I think we have to look into this a little further. A little further. So that's the condition of the Rubicon School. Uh, if you have any questions, just give me a holler. My phone number is all over the place. Again, this is Dan Sigmund, and thank you for watching, and we'll talk again.